Greetings. We're here again at Black Facts Central, coming to you live and direct. Well, 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 we had a uh, interesting time today with Miss Deborah Calhoun, and we um, were able to present to you, hopefully you were able to see it on Facebook or on YouTube, a um, rendition of Frederick Douglass's, one of Frederick Douglass's most famous speeches. What is July 4th to the slave? What is July 4th to the slave? Yeah. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to let you check it out for yourself. You can still see it again on Facebook. You can see a reprise of it. And hopefully it's finished processing and you can see it on YouTube as well. So far, uh, I haven't seen it there pop up yet. But if you really want it, get in touch with me, go through our, our website, www.blakfacts.org. You can get in touch with me through the uh, the website and I'll send you a link because I do have a link. But I mean, it's the same material. It's just a different camera angle on, uh, on YouTube. So it doesn't matter which one you see, whichever one you can access is fine. All right, meanwhile, proverb for the day is what the child says he has heard at home. And that's a Nigerian proverb. What the child says he has heard at home. So keep that in mind. If you don't want your child to say something when he gets outside the house, don't let him hear you say it. Yeah, think about that one. And the riddle uh, today, instead of a poem, we're doing a riddle. And the riddle is, what's black and white and red all over? What's black and white and red all over? I'll let you ruminate on that for a while. See what you come up with. We'll come back to that at the end. Meanwhile, the uh, story for tonight is Push Pushkin's but before we get on with that, we need to finish up on the golden legacy of the Dumas family. And we were just about done last night, but we had a few pages left. And we had finished the story of the general, and we had moved on to the story of the uh, first son, which is Alexandre Dumas. And... We had talked about, if you recall, we had talked about his chateau, the Chateau de Monte Cristo, Chateau de Monte Cristo. There's a picture of it right there, the Chateau de Monte Cristo. And if you go to Gay Perry today, you may still visit the Chateau de Monte Cristo. I was blessed in that I, I did go, uh, plan to go last year, and I went as opposed to trying to go this year. Yeah, that was a good move. Meanwhile, um, we're moving on. And Alexander de Dumas uh, Fils, Fils, they call him Alexander de Dumas Fils, the younger, is uh, become a, uh, a novelist. He's written a novel, and his first novel is that became popular, at least, is The Lady of the Camellias. And it increased the fame of the already immortal name of Dumas, because, you know, the, the general, if you go, when you go to Paris, you go to the um, Champs d'Elysees, and then you, you see the Arc de Triomphe, and in that arc inside, if you go inside the arc, you have to go down the tunnel and come up inside the circle in order to, you can see the, the name of uh, General Dumas, Alexandre Dumas, inside the Arc of the Arc de Triomphe. So that's a very, 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 very famous place where only the names of France's greatest heroes reside. And apparently, uh, Alexandre Dumas was one of them. Okay, so the father says to the son, Alex, their reports are great. You're a success. Now, that success, that initial success led Dumas uh, fees to rewrite the novel into a play which became world famous. And at that point, the father 
breaks down in tears and he hugs his son and he says, Alex, you've surpassed me. You've done even better than I could have ever done. All right. So this is a great, a great family, a great uh, French family, French African family. Two world famous operas, La Traviata by Verdi and Camille by Forrest were also adapted from Dumas Fee's great story. And one of, you know, they, so they, they hail Dumas. They hail Dumas. Alexander Dumas Fee's was now as well known as his father. Some people think he's even more talented than his father. And following his father's footsteps was not an easy task. Trust and believe that. Because his father wrote about 360 books. He wrote a number of plays. He wrote um, uh, cookbooks. He wrote encyclopedias about cooking. He, um, uh, what else did he do? He did something else. He, uh, oh, he financed the, um, the, uh, the, the Spanish army, I believe, or the Italian army trying to uh, recapture uh, Italy from the out of the hands of the fascist. Oh, I mean, he was he was a force to be reckoned with. But he um but the son won honors that were denied him. He was elected to membership in the French Academy, which I'm going to have to look that up to see more to learn more about the French Academy exactly what was the academy and he later became its president. So the the note that I have here says that the academy, the French Academy is the highest French intellectual honor. Intellectuals for them, you know, for the mind. Only the greatest, France's greatest minds are part of the Academy. And Alexander, du, Alexander Dumont Fils became the president of the Academy of the Intellectuals. So the greatest intellect, the greatest writer, the greatest warrior, all of them wrapped up into one family, the Dumas family. In Petit, there are statues of each of these great men, but no monument can be as lasting as the work that immortalizes this great family of African descent. Now I'm going to turn the page here and I'm going to show you a, a, a rendition of these three monuments. Now they're not totally accurate because the one fees has a number of females. It has these women. I don't know why they didn't include it in the picture, but it has these women all coming up the side because he was also a great lover. So yeah, the women loved him in France. And um, this one over here, Dumas, Dumas uh, Père, Père has uh, a number of his characters are all around his statue. I'm telling you from memory because this is what I saw last year when I was in Paris. And this one over here is nothing but a pair of shackles. Why? is there no statue for the general? There was a statue, you see it depicted here. Clearly there was a statue, but there is no statue there today. I'll let you do a little research on that. Google it, see what you find out. You got access to Google, do your thing. Doodle, go do, doodling with some Googling while you're Googling, okay? Now, we're gonna move on. We're gonna read about one more Frenchman, another African Frenchman. We read about Chevalier de saint George. Yesterday, we read about him, Chevalier de St. George, the greatest swordsman, the greatest horseback rider, the greatest duelist, the greatest fencer, the greatest uh, musician uh, in terms of the, the opera, the greatest, uh, oh, and the greatest lover in all of France, Chevalier de St. George. Yeah, also the leader of the Black Legion. And then uh, the other person we're going to talk about today we're going to read a little bit about today is Gaston Monavi, president of the French Senate. So this is more recent. This is, you know, like closer to our time. As president of the French Senate, Gaston Monavi held a position similar to the American vice president. Had de Gaulle, the president of France, resigned while Monavi was in office, he would have become the president of France. Monavi was born in French Guyana in 1897. His father was a minor civil servant, a brilliant student. He won a scholarship to the University of Toulouse and completed his law school in 1921. Shortly afterward, he went to Paris to practice law. In 1928, he defended a group of countrymen from Guyana who'd been accused of taking part in 
political riots. The man, the men were freed and Monavi became a hero to his people. They elected him to the chamber, the, the chamber of deputies in 1932. And again, in 1936, Monavi was later appointed secretary of state for the colonies. When the war came, he joined the French Navy and later helped organize the resistance movement against the Nazis. So World War II. After the war, he returned to Parliament and in 1947 was elected president of the Council of the Republic. When de Gaulle founded the Fifth Republic, Monavi supported him, but they disagreed over democratic procedure and Monavi asserted the Constitution is openly violated and warned that France was headed for a dictatorship. This caused an open break with de Gaulle. However, Monavi continued his defiance of strongman rule. Gaston Monavi has received many honors, including the Croix de, de Guerre, the Medal of Resistance, and membership in the Legion of Honor. Okay, that's a Legion of Heroes. So you can see when I say that Pan African history is universal, this is what I'm talking about. Now we're going to start begin the story of Alexandra Pushkin, but we're not going to be able to read the whole thing. Um, so this is going to come in a couple of parts. But Alexander Pushkin is was the greatest uh, Russian writer and poet ever. Alexander Alexander Pushkin. Okay, so this story begins with Alexander Pushkin's father, much like the one about Dumas began with the the general as opposed to the two sons, uh, uh, fee, uh, Pere and Fees. Pere means uh, the elder, Fees means the younger. Russia's greatest and most beloved poet. Russians read and enjoy his poetry as much today as they did when he was living, when he was a living hero. Some of the greatest of Russian writers called themselves his pupils. Among them were Dostoevsky and Turgenev. Um, oh, okay, it's got, it's got a um, Turgenev and Dostoevsky. Okay, so they have some pronunciation guides here up under this. Um, but his full name was Alexander Sergevich Pushkin. The story of Alexander Pushkin, as far back as can be traced, actually began where? Do you think? In Africa. When he was kidnapped, we must keep these boys as hostages. They are from noble families. Yes, that one, Avram, he is called, uh, he is called, is a prince. They must be sent to Constantinople to the Sultan. Later, this is your new home. You are luckier than your friends. One year passed. Then gather your belongings quietly and come with me. But where are we going? Shh, you'll find out soon enough. This is the lad I wish. Here is your gold. We must be on our way to the Tsar. The Tsar being uh, Tsar, uh, the Russian ruler known as Peter the Great. Yes, Peter the Great will be greatly pleased with this prize. Oh, come on. I already charged this thing. Jeez, my knees. Just charge that phone. Um, later in Russia, these boys look fine and smart. With them, I will prove that my new way of teaching is a good one. Together, we will show my people that even blacks can learn by my new method. I have never seen uh, the czar take to anyone so quickly. This is certainly his favorite of all of the boys he has brought here. Avram was such a favorite that by your godfather, the czar of Russia, and your godmother, the queen of Poland, I christen you, christen you, Avram Petrovich. In other words, Av Avram Peter. Okay, just like Peter the Great. And much later, for you, we will adopt the family name of Anibal, since both of you are from Africa. Since both of you are from Africa? Who's the other one? And you must continue your studies. You will go to Paris to study engineering and math. Avram learned well. After graduating from school, he served in a war in Spain. And upon his return to Russia, you, Avram, will be an engineer in my army and teach math to my son. 
This is uh, the czar on his deathbed. But after Peter the, the Great's death, Peter has given him too many honors. We will fix that. Make out him for some small job for him in Siberia and see to it that he stays there. Anyone could have seen to this small job. Why was I picked for this job? And he's out, out there in the freezing cold. It's very cold and it's you know, very far north. Avram was given smaller and smaller jobs and pushed further into Siberia until, what do you mean I'm under arrest? What are the charges? The charges will be made known to you when we reach Moscow. Meanwhile, the ruler was replaced by Empress Anna Ivanova. And, oops, our time just ran out. So um, we'll pick that story up from there tomorrow. And in the meanwhile, I need all of you little children out there to put down your little head on your little pillow on your little bed. Close those yeah, yeah eyes. Go ahead and sleep tight, sleep right. Don't let those bed bugs bite. We'll see you back here tomorrow night. You know what time, because it always rhymes. You're looking at Doc Ock at noon and nine. I'm checking out, but I'll see you a little bit later. Let there be no doubt. And when I see you, I hope that you will be able to shout. Oh, almost forgot. What was the answer to the riddle? What is black and white and red all over? Black and white and red all over the newspaper. Hello. Good night.